Taurus. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Working with the Light Seers Tarot. Um, this is a reading for March. The Tower and Six of Pentacles. Very interesting. So a new path is opening up for you, Taurus. It's a result of a breakdown of an old path. It's inner. The experience, there's something uh, profoundly changed in you. I think Uranus is really, Uranus hitting the 20th degree, which is the degree of awakening and commencing the last third of your sign, uh, which is a very ancient, wise aspect of Taurus. I think it breaks down a sense of self and belief system that has been more modern and possibly from recent lifetimes. Not 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 important good ones when I say modern ones, not like freedom based, uh, human rights based. I mean other things. It's hard to pinpoint right now. It's very amorphic what I'm fe feeling, but it makes way to. something older that is returning that you're um, you're going to you're going to be walking on that trail it's going to um, release some of your um, gifts that have been... I don't know if suppressed or hidden or um, dormant. It's going to change your priorities, the balance, the things that you emphasize. And I see it happening like a dance. I mean, there is a level of shock to it, but it's not like scary shock. It's almost like... I don't know how to describe it, but it's... It's, it's sensational, but it doesn't feel bad. Um, it feels like... You know how to handle it. There's there's just... Hmm. Oh, Taurus. You're going to meet new friends. It's almost like Alice in Wonderland meeting, you know, the, her new friends, you know, Cheshire the cat and the Mad Hatter and these kind of friends, uh, the Queen of Hearts, you know, the goods and the bads. I don't, you know, don't, don't over, don't look at it as too literal, but something like, and they're going to guide you through this trail. Um... Okay, show us more, please, for Taurus. Ten of Wands, and it was at the bottom of the deck. When a card wants to come out, it comes out. So, this is the trail. 
And there's already a trail and a mountain behind you, right? There's already, you've already been walking a trail, a path, a long one. But this is what is ahead of you, right? This is what's behind you. And this is what is ahead of you. And it's like... And I'm really drawn to her um, facial expression here that seems that almost like surprise. Almost like you take a turn and then you see something you didn't expect to see. And, you know, the colors and the imagery are very, very different than one another. So it's like it's been hard and rigorous and um, strenuous. Uh, kata. Sienshin means a uh, long and strenuous journey in karate. Never mind. So it's that. And you see how she has her, all her belongings, and she's like. But here it's like light heart, light hearted, uh, not much carrying. It's like an easy load of carrying. Um, it's a different type of travel. Maybe you have more resources, more finances, so the travel becomes easier, or the, or the transition. If it's not actual physical travel or physical move, then the transition from one state to the other, from one mindset to the other, is lighter and easier because you seem to have resources now. And I think it's going to happen as a surprise, as a shock, unexpected earning or windfall. But it's just, it's going to be fluid and it's going to be easy. The Tower is 16 and then 6 of Pentacles and 10 of Wands. We have 1616. Maybe the 16th of the month is meaningful or the 6th or the 10th. Something with 16. Four of Pentacles. It's like you're still staying somewhat in between. Like you're not fully transitioning. You're still holding on to what you've, what you have, what you've earned, what you've worked for, uh, what you've created. You're not completely letting go. Um, it's like you're you're on the fence. You're in between worlds. You're one foot here, one foot there. Eight of Pentacles. This is there's something very exciting about this. I think you're discovering something that um, makes you just want to know all about it and just give it your all. And you seem to also be juggling um, and doing like several things, several different things. Um, and it's like in a mastery way. You're you're masterful at maintaining what you've what you've attained or what you have and working with it, but also while simultaneously learning something new or creating something new and different, and maybe incorporating the two together. Um, I see your schedule changing, becoming very systematic, very specific. Queen of Swords. Save money, Taurus. If you find yourself making a little more than the usual, put some money aside. Open a, um, a savings account. However, however it works for you. Um, but, but put some money on the side. Maybe have an account that you just put money in, but you never touch. Whatever the case may be, however you do it,
you'll use it one day to create something, an idea or a creative work or a creative project that you'll need the extra resources and, and other, even if not, it's always good to have. Never a bad advice, right? But it's coming through. And you're also called to um, be very accurate in the way you express your skill set and what you what you know. Be specific in uh, where you express it and how you express it, and, and being like, and I don't want to say moderation. I don't like that word, but like with wisdom. Don't show all your cards. Don't show everything you know. Uh, at once, be strategic, um, but utilize, utilize your skill, utilize your knowledge, utilize your experience, but be strategic about it. People really show themselves to people whom they assume won't get it or don't fully understand or won't speak up or won't resist or won't argue, you know, so silence can be very powerful sometimes you you know if someone knows how smart you are and how you can pick up on their lies they won't lie to you but then you won't know that they're a liar you want to know someone's nature teach them that they can lie to you and get away with it at first that's how you know one of my biggest things is like knowing when someone is lying to me and not telling or not saying anything and acting like everything is fine. But then I make my own decisions based on that. Sometimes and sometimes no. Sometimes I feel like I have to confront and say something. But when you let, when you put your ego aside and let people disrespect, your, disrespect or belittle your intelligence or not assume too much of you, you learn a lot. And you also get to know who your truly friends are and who will take advantage of you and who will not. You know, you get to see how people truly are when they think they can treat you a certain way. So that's important. If I act silly and someone doesn't take advantage of that or doesn't um, play me for it, I'm like, okay, this is an ally. And then I show myself. Uh, not always, but it's it's something. It's coming through this tech, this uh, strategy here. It's coming through. So maybe some of you needed to hear that. Um, the best way to showcase your wisdom and smarts is by not being obsessed with showcasing your wisdom and smarts. When people think that you can read their body language and pick up on their different tones and literally sense their auric field, they're tim they're timid about being around you. You know, people like holding on to their secrets and their lies. And I'm not judging it, by the way. It's natural. We all get to have our privacy. Um, but it's also something for you, Claire, Claire sentience out there, or any type of clairvoyance. Um, sometimes it's better to not tell people what you know or what you see because then they feel uncomfortable it's not necessarily from a place of strategy more so from a place of kindness and respect and also to to have friends <laughs> very few people can handle this you know so watch my uh, 13th element video um, I did it a while back but just look it up on my channel it's called The Gifts and Curse of Being a Seer. If you go to my 13th Element playlist and scroll down, you'll find it. Or you can just look it up. Um, yeah. The world. <clears throat> I said it in a funny way. The world. <laughs> Um, 
you're going to broaden your horizons and looking at the world in a broader perspective this month. Um, and it's not necessarily from a place that is altruistic or anything like that, more so from a place that is wise, that allows you to either learn more or be stronger in your um, whatever position you're in um, or whatever path you're on. Um, you know, it's good to know the world, A, for this, first and foremost, for the sake of peace and love and connection. But we all know we don't live in a perfect world, so also it's good to know the world from a place of knowing thy enemy. You know, Bruce Lee said, or was it from um, the art of war? Anyway, that if you know yourself but not thy enemy, in a hundred battles, maybe you'll win half. If you know your enemy but not thyself, in a hundred battles, maybe you'll win half. If you don't know yourself and don't know your enemy, you will never win a battle. But if you know thyself and thy enemy, nothing can defeat you. So know the world, know the state of the world so that you can cross-reference and compare and expand and also have tools to handle it if it ever becomes a need. I like to say this every so often when I get a chance um, to my seekers, to you guys. The way to be on a spiritual path is knowing geopolitics. Well, it's not the only way, but it's a big aspect of it. You can't help anyone if you don't know the pain of the world. Um, and you can't be a guide of truth and justice if you don't have an understanding, a, a wide understanding of this checkmate of life. Um, and also when you don't know, it's easy to play you. And then it's very easy to fall into the virtue signaling instead of the actual path of virtue because when you're taught from your culture, from your you know, perspective from your environment, what is good, but you don't see anything, but you don't actually test it in the field or actually investigate yourself or actually have anything to compare it to, then especially if you're someone who wants to do good, then it will be very easy for you to fall prey to the place of, well, this is considered good. So I'm just going to believe in that and be active be an activist for that, you know, until one day you realize you've been played. Um, the biggest instrument of evil is virtuous, useful fools. People who want to be virtuous, but don't bother in actually going through the difficult path of learning virtue. So they're told, you're told, this will make you a good person. And then you just, okay. It's especially important here in America because critical thinking has gone off the window and the education system has been hijacked um, by countries who don't believe in freedoms. So ask yourself the question, if I believe in freedom, does it make sense for me to side with those who don't believe in freedom? allegedly in the name of freedom. It's a rabbit hole. Ah, maybe it's this uh, Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole that we're seeing here in the tower. Literally. Oh, it's not a rabbit, it's a squirrel. Anyway, squirrel hole. <laughs> but it could be anything else. There's so many things, especially from the past few years, that, that what I just said can apply to. So... Um, Pick your, pick your uh, red pill, pick your rabbit hole, <laughs> have a safe journey. <laughs> but this is good. This is great. This is, this is very powerful and empowered. This is very wise. This is very um, true. So I trust you. Mm. My back. Hold on. Oof. Okay. Math. Some of you are encouraged to study math. I don't know why or where it's come from, but you'll know if it applies to you. If you're like needing to choose a course and math is an option, math. Yes, it is very important for um, for day to day skill. 
even equations, even geometry, that it, it expands the mind and it allows it to know how to do other things as well. You know, like when you know several languages, it really helps your brain being able to multitask and understand different concepts at, at the same time. And you're like, well, well, how is that to do with language? Well, it's it, 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 it strengthens the muscle of a part of the brain that is to do with these things, right? Um, so math strengthens the um, the left lobe of the brain, and it allows you to think clearly and sharply and make sense of things and connect the dots and consider what is written and also what is not written. You know, understanding math equations or geometry helps you read between the lines. You know, it seems like what? But yeah, so math know how to calculate without a calculator. It is such an important brain function. And please don't dismiss it when it comes to the studies of your children. Please. Languages, reading and writing, history and math. History and math. History and math. If you study history, you're, you have better chances of not becoming a useful fool to evil. History, 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 world history, 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 history. I'm going to say it again. If you study math, you know how to critically think. Please, please, history and math. And everything else, literature and all the fun stuff, but history and math. America, I love you, but God damn it, history and math. Eight of Cups, history and math. Oh my God, I'm on a roll. How many times do I need to say this to you? History and math. Especially if you want to be a spiritual person and guide others, especially. Yeah, cult system, spirituality, divination, history and math. Eight of Cups. Um, something is reaching its completion. Um, you've solidified a spiritual and energetic and karmic journey. And you're now free to walk away from it with ease to the next thing that is just the natural... Um, Natural continuance, natural progression, history and math. Sorry, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill it in your brain. So important. Um, I like that it's kind of a calm thing. It's not a stormy thing that she's walking away from. And it's like flat field, easy to walk. And it's, towards this like really beautiful either sunset or sunrise but the light is very warm um it's not completely an ending you're utilizing this past it's it's it becomes integrated into the next like a baby is integrated to the baby you got integrated into the adult you, right? Uh, it's the same heart that grew. So it's kind of like that. The path that you're moving away from is just getting integrated to a broader aspect of yourself and your path. We'll still utilize it. It will still be something. The flame will still be uh, lit. But parts of, it, parts of it will not. And that's okay. Anything specific for Taurus? Anything else more specific for Taurus? Seven of Pentacles. Right underneath the Six of Pentacles. So this path is going to reap really good results in abundance. It's going to be slow. It's going to be mellow. It's not going to be all at once. It's not going to be a shock lottery win. Um... It's going to happen in collaboration with your creations. It's going to be a co-creation. And it's beautiful. 
It's like you've sown seeds that have and are, you know, gained hold in the soil and they will grow. But once again, put a little bit of money on the side if you make extra and history and math. Oh my God, you probably hate me by now for this. <laughs> oh well. Is there anyone interesting here in this reading? The hermit. Okay. This feels like a solitary reading, I'll be honest with you. I'm not picking my picking well. It's not to say that there isn't romance or partnership or friendship or just camaraderie. And I see you doing things that will naturally involve other people. But I also see, oh, bottom of the deck, king of pentacles. Okay. So maybe there is someone around and three of cups and the emperor. Okay. So there are, there is a community. There is someone, uh, there is connections. Um, but the main thing, focus of this reading is the path that you're undergoing yourself which is something that is very personal and inner and solitary and and you're gaining a level of um expansion like an aw an awakening of some sort, um, an enlightenment of some sort. You're kind of raising the frequency. You're, you're getting yourself into a higher realm, seeing yourself above it all, but still with it all. And that's, that's the trick of enlightenment above it all, but still with it all. Um, feeling it, having empathy towards it, being a part of it, but not being drowned and overwhelmed by it, and seeing the bigger picture. It's like you circle a mountain. It's like you're walking a path and it's long and it's long and it's long and it's long, but it's not linear. It doesn't actually take you from point A to point B. It just circles you upward in the same point, but in a higher frequency, broader frequency, should I say. It's the same mountain, but you will go from the bottom of the mountain to the middle of the mountain to the top of the mountain. Um, so it's the same area of expertise, but you're better and more expanded and how you teach, right? It's the same belief system, but in more in greater depth of understanding and more in, it more um, integrated. And you don't just, you take it from knowing it here to knowing it here and integrating it into your system. It's just an improvement of what is. And you seem to be in a cer certain vortex where you're, moving you're in movement you're in change you're in development you're in expansion but you're also uh, rooted in, in in the same in the same place um i will continue pulling cards and um dive into a sequel for this reading I will clarify the characters here, the Queen of Swords, the King of Pentacles, the Emperor, the Community, and the Three of Cups, and just other aspects of this. We'll go deeper. We'll see more. Uh, it is available right here. Um, you also have your Karmic Shift and Liberation here. However, if you have this, you have both of these. And if you want to have both of these plus Tarot Masterclass and Study Tarot for me, that's right here. So one for one, two for one. Three, four, one. Yeah. And of course, you can book a private reading with me right here.